In our last video, we discovered the fate of a synth who went missing and never made it back to Acadia. After telling Chase the sad news, we got to meet a colorful cast of characters who live at Acadia. They're all kind of mean, really. But to cheer them up, we can try to finish all of the quests here. And that means we're stuck doing Faraday's task. He told us that a ship wrecked somewhere to the south. And on the ship were a bunch of data storage drives that he needs delivered to Acadia. The quest marker points us to a location near to Southwest Harbor. Heading out of Acadia, we see a road at the back of the observatory that leads down the hill towards Southwest Harbor. To see all the sights along the way, we'll take the road, which winds past the old pond house and a number of unmarked locations before ending at Southwest Harbor. The first part of the trip is not very eventful. We loot some aster and kill a yaogwai until we arrive at a fork in the road. The trail continues south, but off to the west we see a light glowing. This is the old pond house, one of the locations that was marked on our map when we found the magazine inside the last plank. Since it's on the way, we can explore it. I decided to come back when it was daylight, and we find it infested with trappers. <laughs> Despite being a marked location, there's not a whole lot here, though it is always good to find a new location that has a guaranteed spawn of trappers. Really, the most notable thing we find here, aside from the numerous containers to loot, is a meat hook lying on a kitchen table. The meat hook is a brand new weapon that comes with Far Harbor. This one isn't legendary or anything. It's a regular meat hook. It's an unarmed weapon. Before perks and other stats are considered, it does a base damage of 20, but it can be upgraded at a workbench to have extra hooks. These extra hooks increase its damage by 5, but also grant us a chance to disarm. Because it's an unarmed fist weapon, it can't be used in power armor. It's a medium speed weapon like the other fist weapons, and it's a pretty decent one. Before upgrading it, it has the same damage output as a power fist, and after upgrading it, it matches the damage output of a Deathclaw gauntlet. But since my character is a power armor character, I didn't fare so well while using it. Heading upstairs, we find a novice locked box safe on the floor next to the master bed. Inside, we find a tidy stash of bottle caps, chems, and ammunition. Taking the ladder to the attic, we find one explosives box with a small selection of explosives. The old pod house is a great place to hit if you're into crafting, for it's one of the few locations where we can walk away with a tidy stash of raw sap. Here we'll find a number of trees with buckets nailed to them collecting sap from the trees. If we harvest the sap, we find a new consumable called raw sap, which can be consumed raw. It heals 30 hit points over time and does not douse us with radiation, but its most important use is as a crafting component for Ware's Brew, a recipe we haven't gotten yet, so I'll cover it more a bit later. Back to the road, we can continue to follow it south. We stumble upon a herd of Radstag, and along the way we see a really cool pre-war propaganda poster. Spotted a commie devil? Dial 1-800-REPORT-RED. He's got a little red demon commie in a fusion flea. <laughs> I love it. Eventually we find a fork in the road. The main road continues south, but there appears to be a small unmarked road that goes north. Just outside, we find a sign that says, Caution, Falling Rocks. At the end of this little dirt road is a ruined Corvega with an explosives box inside. Continuing south, about halfway to the Southwest Harbor, we see some buildings off to the right. These were pre-war homes by a pond and they're all boarded up, but the pond is guarded by a venomous angler. In a shed by the pond, we find a chemistry station and a fusion core on a barrel. Growing from the pond is a bunch of lure weed, and at the edge of the pond we see an interesting scene. A bunch of lawn chairs have been set out before a gazebo. Climbing atop the gazebo, we see that it overlooks the pond. Must have been a place for ceremonies of some kind. And indeed, if we look underneath the floorboards of this gazebo, we find a gift card. Jess and Jim 
We hope you enjoy the nuclear dishwasher. You two make a wonderful couple. We wish you all the best in the years to come. Bruce and Lori. So looks like a wedding was going on here, or had just recently finished the morning the bombs dropped. It's a bit early for a wedding. This gazebo location is not marked on the map. Here's the exact spot on the map where I found the note. Just north of the little pond, we find a terrifying scene. Here we find lit candles surrounding an exhumed grave. Lying in the shallow grave is a skeleton clutching a garden gnome. And surrounding the grave are three garden gnomes with a shovel. Why is it that whenever we find these garden gnomes, they're always doing something horrible to a corpse? Did they murder this guy and their friend and try to bury them? Or maybe this man was buried with their friend and they dug him up to save him. I don't know. But whatever happened here, it's too disturbing to linger. Eventually, this road going north to south ends with the road going east to west. To find Southwest Harbor, we need to go west. And along the way, we stumble upon the ruins of a town. These ruins are not marked, but there's a lot to explore here. There are two loops I went around in a big circle, exploring the first and then exploring the last before going on to Southwest Harbor. We find a bunch of ghouls by a shop. In the shop, we find some Nuka-Cola on the shelves, money in a cash register, and a novice-locked box safe by the desk. Inside, we find a lot of ammunition. There's another Nuka-Cola by a lunchbox on top of some filing cabinets. Next to this, we see what I think is a hatchery. We find fish floating dead in this thing and the water is really shallow. Or maybe it was a shop for selling live bait. We see a big, beautiful Vim billboard. There is one building with a bunch of tanks nearby, and next to this is an empty Pulowski Preservation Shelter, which is guarded by a pack of wolves. In a Red Rocket truck stop, we find a first aid kit with a stim pack and Radaway inside, and then we find a large lion statue outside a ruined manor. Due to its proximity to the Vim bottling plant, perhaps this was the home of a Vim executive. The manor itself is completely ruined. The first floor practically blocked in with rubble. The rubble came from the second floor, which is mostly collapsed. Here we find a teddy bear leaning against a wall with an iron. Around the other side of the wall, we find a chem box with ammunition and chems inside and bobby pins on the bureau. By now, the sun was beginning to rise and we get a better view of the lion statues. With the ruins of this unmarked town explored, we can head towards Southwest Harbor. Here I encountered a road sign that was so badly eroded that I couldn't tell what it said. I don't know. If you have any thoughts, let me know in the comments. We arrive on the northern side of Southwest Harbor, and the town is infested with trappers. Before exploring it, we've got to clear them. The ruins of Southwest Harbor are sprawling. It's a great little place to get lost in. We see Acadia at the top of the mountain, then below it, the old pond house. Then the road went south and moved west through the ruins of the unmarked town until it reached Southwest Harbor. We see the harbor itself jutting into the town, and the main shack where we killed most of the trappers is right at the southern tip overlooking the harbor. Of note, we find a wooden crate on the rooftop of one of the buildings that the trappers were shooting from, and next to this, an ammo box. By the harbor, we find a shed with a power armor station inside and an armor workbench. In a little nook by the town square, we find another wooden crate, and in the main shack by a trapper perch, we find an ammo box, and on the top floor, an end of dungeon steamer trunk. Now that Southwest Harbor is clear, we can try to find this shipwreck. Heading down to the harbor, we see a number of boat racks with the rowboats pouring out of it. There are a number of shipwrecks sunken in the water, a few of which have any noteworthy loot. Following the harbor shore northwest, we find a fire on the water, and it's coming from a boat. 
It's doubtful that this fire has been burning for 200 years. It must be coming from a boat that crashed recently. We now understand why this boat crashed. The people on board were likely killed by the trappers. This must be burning fuel that came from the ship. On the ship, spilling out of the storage container, we find our first storage drive. And next to this is a second one. Now, these are the only two storage drives we need to loot to complete this step of the quest. However, inside the shipping canister, we find the machinery that was being shipped to Acadia and attached to it is a third storage drive, which we can loot. However, looting this doesn't update any of our quest objectives. Near to this is a steamer trunk, but it's a labeled steamer trunk, Victoria's trunk, and it requires a key, a key which we don't have. Who is Victoria? And what was her trunk doing on a ship filled with Acadian goods? We didn't meet anyone in Acadia named Victoria, and no one has mentioned this Victoria. Who is she? But in the cabin of the ship, we find a steamer trunk we can loot. Inside is ammunition, including a mini nuke, a pretty decent haul. The right ship is pretty hard to miss considering the water around it is on fire, but it's on the southwestern shore of Southwest Harbor. Here's its exact location on the map. Well, we've got what we came for. My itch to explore was just too strong, so I looked around a bit before heading back to Acadia. Just north of the ship, on a rickety wooden walkway, we find the skeleton of a woman wearing sunglasses lying on a lounger and she's surrounded by booze. I guess I can't think of a better way to toast in the apocalypse. To her left are all of her empties. Wow, she died. Drunk. But to her right, in a box, we find a bunch of full bottles. Looks like she didn't get through it all before the bombs dropped. There's whiskey, vodka, Gwinnett Pale Ale, bourbon, and beer. Nice. On the way back, we pass a picker-up truck billboard. Ain't no load she can't haul. I love the vehicles in the Fallout universe. They're gorgeous. I love them so much that I did a video about all of the pre-war cars we can find in Fallout 4 that you can watch here. When done sightseeing, we can head back to Acadia and tell Faraday the good news. Hi. Yes? I've got those storage drives you asked for. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Uh, just the two? Really? I somehow thought there were three. You didn't say anything about a certain number of them. Is there a problem? Hmm? No. No problem. Not really. I just... I really was rather sure there had been three. You never talk numbers. I got what I could, okay? Right. Okay, you're right. I never did say... I just... I could have sworn there were three. Don't try and back out on me here, Faraday. Pay up. No, no. That's not it at all. I just... There really should have been three of them. That was all I could find on the boat. Right. Okay, well, I'm sure this is fine. Thank you. Well, you did your part, so I'll do mine. Thank you for recovering these. With that, we complete the side quest, Data Recovery, and we complete the overarching quest that included completing both Chase and Faraday's quests, Acadian Ideals. This conversation with Faraday is really weird because we did find a third storage drive and we could loot it. It just wasn't part of the quest. Also, there's a weird thing with this third storage drive. I tried to drop it from my inventory because it weighed six pounds, only to discover that it floats in the air. Yeah. Well, I guess I can't leave it here, so we can take it and put it in this desk. There you go, Faraday. There's your third dog on storage drive. Hope you're happy. Now to find Kasumi. Before we do, we can head to Dejin to restock on ammunition. I need to talk to you. Look, it's no secret that I don't exactly trust outsiders. Anyone. But I need help. The kind of help that stays quiet. I have my own set of contacts. Folks that warn me when things are about to go bad, and they're telling me that Chase screwed up. Something she did the last time she was in the Commonwealth got the Institute's attention, and they're on her trail. There's a courser sniffing around, and it won't be long before he finds Acadia. Can't let that happen. You've proven you can handle yourself. Can you stop him? Now, Dejin only offers this quest to characters who haven't sided with the Institute, for obvious reasons. And so we'll be doing this quest on my Brotherhood character. Chase is a courser. Why not 
let them fight it out. If he so much as sees Chase, he knows he's on the right trail. Someone who's not a synth, nothing to do with Acadia, can't give us up. So, are you in? Coursers? Huh. Wouldn't be the first time I've taken one down. Shit. Should have guessed it, I suppose. All right, so you're the real deal. That means you're in, yeah? Sorry, this isn't my fight. Yeah, that's about what I expected. Thanks for nothing. I'll find him before he finds you. Don't worry. I know this means you putting your life in danger for me. For us. I want you to know that it's not for nothing. With that, we begin the quest Hunting the Hunter. We've got to track down a courser. This quest only opens up to us if we completed the main Fallout 4 storyline quest Hunter slash Hunted due to the sole survivor's dialogue choice to say that he's killed a courser before and only after completing Chase's quest, which showed Dejan that we were up to the task. And of course, only if we didn't side with the Institute. Wouldn't make much sense for the new director to go hunt down one of her own coursers. But assuming we meet all of the qualifications and get the quest, we pick up a courser signal in a random location on the island. This courser doesn't appear in the same place every time. In this case, we pick up a signal on a road south of Acadia and Far Harbor, almost due west of the MS Azalea. However, upon arriving at the location, we oftentimes find the courser in a firefight with some of the local hostels. In this case, it was trappers. So we've got quite a job to do. Maybe it was just me, but this courser felt significantly more difficult than the coursers we've killed in the Commonwealth. At any rate, there's nothing special about this courser. He's aggressive on sight, so we can't talk with him. Our only option is to kill him. Once the courser is dead, we can return to Acadia and check in with Dejan. Hey, Dejan. Tell me you've got good news. Sorry. News about what? The courser. Come on, don't play games with me. Good news? No! Terrible news! He got me! I'm dead. Yeah. And now, my ghost will haunt you forever. Ooh. Don't be an asshole. Relax, pal. I got rid of the courser and saved your asses. Yeah, yeah. You're a real hero. Don't worry. The courser's dead. You're safe. That is good news. I know it was asking a lot. And I won't forget that you did it. If nothing else, You've earned yourself a discount. Thanks, friend. With that, we complete the quest and we earn a whopping 20% discount at his store. So it's best to buy Sergeant Ash and Old Reliable after we complete this quest. Now we find a dialogue option to ask Dajin his personal story. So, what's your story? I... I don't like talking about it. I made it to Acadia. That's what matters. Now that I'm here, I'm going to make sure nothing happens to it. But he's KG. However, after we complete this quest, he opens up. So what's your story? I guess there's no harm in talking about it. I escaped the Institute, found the railroad. They agreed to help me get out of the Commonwealth. Institute tracked them down and slaughtered them all. As far as I know, I'm the only one who got away. So I'm here to make sure it wasn't all for nothing. We begin to understand exactly why Dajin is as distrustful as he is. He is, of course, concerned for himself and the other Acadians, but he may also be worried about getting the sole survivor involved. After all, when he got the railroad involved, they all died, and their deaths probably weigh heavily on his conscience. He's probably referring to one single safe house, not the entirety of the railroad. We already know from the railroad story that they've lost many safe houses in the past. Dajin must have been part of one of them that got raided by the Institute. With that, we've helped the synths of Acadia, and at last we can go downstairs to the bottom level to finally meet Kasumi. 
We'll pick up with the story right here where we leave off in my next episode. I publish many videos each and every week on this channel, so if you don't want to miss it, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have and you still feel like you're missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I've got a brand new shirt in the shop. Sacrifices have to be made. If you agree with Dima that sacrifices must be made, you can find this shirt in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes and in a wide array of colors. You can find it on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. YouTube members and Patreon patrons are becoming ever more important as YouTube continues to make changes to their platform that make the future of monetization questionable. So to all my members and Patreon patrons, you have my sincerest thanks. You guys make these videos possible. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos.